Anti-gravity is unstoppable when you combine it with open code if you know how to use it correctly. Open code is the fastest growing AI coding agent on the planet. And when you connect it to anti-gravity, you can get access to over 70 AI models from free. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to add open code to anti-gravity. So you don't need to pay for $200 subscriptions, you don't have to hit rate limits, and you can build your apps faster. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Jack Roberts. I built and sold my last tech startup with over 60,000 customers and now I run a seven-figure AI automation business. And if you haven't already, grab that coffee and let's dive straight in. So Google's anti-gravity can build apps, websites, it can be your personal Jarvis, it can build any AI system as we know. And it's powered by two very powerful models, Claude 4.5 and also Gemini. And then we have Open Code, which is the world's fastest AI coding agent. And I'm gonna show you why that is significant and how that might affect you in this video. Now, what it does when you give it access to Open Code is it gives you access to over 150 different models that you don't get access to with an anti-gravity, which will basically help you save money and power up your building so if you hit limits you're able to continue developing with an anti-gravity now as we know anti-gravity is a coding app and the best way to think about anti-gravity your kind of coding app is as a fighter jet think of it as a vehicle okay now there are many options or many different fighter jets that you could be and the model the person who flies in that fighter jet is the pilot and the two pilots if you like that we have access to an anti-gravity are Gemini and Claude and you can use GPT chat GPT, but it's a very, it's not very strong model. It's only good at very kind of specific things. The point is that we have access to two brilliant models. But what Open Code does is it gives us access to a full pilot army. So when we power up anti-gravity, we can use any of these models that we want to. And you can use these crucially from free, which is one of the main benefits, especially people who aren't on the top tier plan, who may run out of credits, you can actually use these to, to save costs basically. So instead of you running out of tokens, which means that you stop building, you can now continue with the introduction of this. And you can even use local models. <laughs> if you've seen this image before, you'll, you'll know why that's funny. And the cool thing about it as well is you can use all the GPT models using your chat GPT subscription. So traditionally, we used to have to use our, our API tokens so you'd be build on token usage, but what Open Code lets you do is actually use your, your existing chat GPT plus subscription in it to code and build anything you want to within anti-gravity. You can use it within any of the co-pilots or any of the, even your terminal basically. So it's really comprehensive like that. And at the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you one of the mechanisms that people are using anti-gravity technically for free if they hit their right limits, but I'll touch more on that towards the end of the video. So let's start by looking at what open code is. So as it says, it's an open source AI coding agent. It actually ruffled some feathers with Anthropic who cut off access to this, but OpenAI have embraced it quite strongly. And it is, as I say, it is so, fast growing. And it's a couple of their stats you can see actually if you come down here. Over 70,000 GitHub stars, which is code for internet updates. People really love it. 500 contributors and 650,000 monthly devs. So it's built for privacy first. There's a privacy first initiative, which is really interesting. And obviously, as you look at very sensitive data, it becomes quite a different thing because when you're building in these apps, it's within their kind of environment. So lots of interesting things, but the tilde to take away from this is that open code is an open source agent that helps you write and run code within any AI models. So think about it, open up the whole army of fighter jet pilots and it's available as a terminal based interface desktop app or you can use it as an IDE extension which we're going to be using inside anti-gravity so now we're going to cover exactly how you can get access to these state-of-the-art AI models for free and how you can get a zero cost alternative and we're going to add this together in anti-gravity but it will also work in any of these IDEs or even your terminal and then I'm also going to show you one of the integrations with anti-gravity that you can add at the end of the video awesome so we are on the open code website all we're going to do is come down and just click copy on this code right here and then we're going to move to anti-gravity i've created an example environment called open code and what we need to do now is use a terminal so as you're familiar with in anti-gravity most of our conversations happen on the right hand side right we pick the model we pick whether we want fast or planning but we're going to use a terminal for this because the other environment we may use and remember anti-gravity is an agentic first coding platform right so we often use the agent manager and we open the agent manager and we have all our projects on the left and we can do conversations and we've got kind of playgrounds etc. But when we're using open code, we're doing that in the terminal. Now, the terminal is something we can use on our computer, as you can access by unmark command spacebar and type in terminal. And essentially, as you can see right now, it will open up for us. And then this is the terminal. We can do various different things and, and have a great time with it. But we're going to use this within anti-gravity because this is the user interface that we're familiar with. So I'm going to come up top, click on terminal. So you've got file, edit, selection, view, go, run, terminal. Click on new terminal. 
This opens up the terminal panel, and you can see, guys, you've got the terminal, which is basically just communicating with your computer. And actually, on the right-hand side, we can delete these. We can just literally add a new one, as many as we want to, by clicking on the plus, and we can add as many different, meaning you've got multiple parallel agents running simultaneously. So we're going to come down. We're going to paste in that command and hit enter. And as you can see, mine is already installed because it said, hey, Jack, it's already installed. And if you want to make sure it's installed or not, you can enter this code here, which is open code space dash dash version. And this will tell you the version of open code that's already on that, which is cool. And it says, hey, basically comes back and lets you know the specifics. And the way that we access this, just like everything else, when you install Claude code, for example, if I wanted to use Claude, I would type in the word Claude and all of a sudden Claude code would start to appear in the terminal. And now I'm talking to Claude code. Awesome. So as you can see, open code is now appeared and we've got this black interface, but maybe we don't like it down below. So what we can actually do here is right click and panel position and put this on the right hand side like that, right? Which is looking better. And if we want to get rid of the agent for purposes of this, we can do. And the Mac, you can do command L, I believe, and that sends it away. Does cool. So now we've got open code exactly where that used to be, and you can ask it anything you want to. So the first thing we want to do with this, right, essentially is now we get access to all these cool models, is you can do command shift which goes from plan and build. Very, very simple. So what we can do here is we can down and we can type in models like so, and it shows you all of the models that basically you have access to, and you can view all of them by control and A. So if you come down control and A, you can see all of these different models now that you have access to. So let's say, for example, we wanted to use the most powerful OpenAI models. We can do this just with our typical ChatGPT subscription, or I could just pick one of the free models, or I could connect it to OpenRouter, which itself is connected to literally everything. So the way we do this, guys, very simply to get to the model is right click, and then we're gonna go for connect like so. So connect to provider. Let's pick the provider we want to go for. So let's just say you want to do open AI. And by the way, there's an anti-gravity specific plugin for this that connects the email addresses that I'll get to. And we'll say, look, do you want to do your manual API key, which is just your API key, or your ChatGPT Pro or Plus? So if you've got a ChatGPT account, it just runs off that. So if I click on this one, for example, here, which is awesome, and all it says is basically copy all this information. So let's click on that link open it up, and this should take us through to our ChatGPT account, and then we just simply sign in right here. There we go, and then basically it pops up with sign into Codox ChatGPT, so we say, hey, we're happy with that, and we click on continue, like so, which is awesome, authorization is successful, we can now return to open code. So, we come back over to open code, and that should all be done, and now we've got all these beautiful models. So now we have GPT 5.2 Codex with an anti-gravity. So one of the key takeaways here is you can use open code when you run out of tokens or you want to use a different model. Because remember, all the models are specialized for something different. So even if you're using Gemini or Claude for like 99% of the stuff, it's really good for you to have the ability and the skills to say, do you know, what? actually, this brand new model just launched. I want to use it. We can now use open code to do that. And you've got the skills to do that now because you have access to over 100 and, 50, and crucially, also Open Router, which, as you can see from their website, gives you access to everything. And this basically means now that you're not beholden to any one specific model for whatever you want to do. And so now let's actually give it my anti gravity master prompt that I use whenever I build anything out. I'll put a link for it down below. You can have it completely for free. I spent weeks building and focusing on this, refining it, but you don't, just so you don't have to, basically. So all you do is literally copy all this stuff all the way down. So let's come over and grab it without moving it over, which is really cool. And what we're going to do is come back over then to our beautiful thing here. And we're just going to paste it in GPT 5.2 codex, just so you get a sense of how it works. And we hit enter. And you can see already that the interface is really cool compared to the terminal. And again, you can run this in the terminal if you want to, just while that's thinking for a second. I'm going to control command T, type in terminal. One second, actually we'll come down here. I think I've already got it open here. Again, you can just come down. If you ever want to use it in your terminal, you can do open code. And this is one of the things that the founder of Claude Code said, that they really like using it in the terminal because it's a little bit faster. But again, you don't necessarily need to use it. And just like that, guys, it's basically come back now with everything I suggested. And if you remember from my last video, again, I'll put a link on ScreenX, specifically what this does. It initializes the project, and what it essentially does, before it does anything else, is creates Gemini.md on the left-hand side, which is all the core project files. And what we essentially do first is what we do, the North Star, what's the thing we want to do, our desired outcome in, in plain English, the integrations, what are the services we want to connect to, the source of truth, the delivery, payload, the behavioral rules, and all that sort of stuff. So what we're going to do, the first part of our project is essentially answer these questions. As you can see, it's already created for us now a bit of a project project map. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to go ahead and build me a LinkedIn post generator. I'm going to give you some copy. And then from that copy, I want you to create for me three LinkedIn posts that follow the best practices that I give you. No need for any integrations. Source of truth essentially is just going to be the best practices that I give you for LinkedIn. I want the final product to be on the website and I want it to look quite visually engaging, quite cool. And yeah, no other constraints, just all on one page for me there. It's a very, very simple challenge just how to go and build that just to so get a sense of how this works and interacts. And the really cool thing with this is that anytime I want to bring in any of the anti-gravity models or Claude Code or anything, I can do that really straightforward, which is super duper cool. So you go, it's gone down that. It's got that. For a 
I can proceed. And if you details, I can refine the payload blueprint. The source copy, you want the post generated from. So let's head to my LinkedIn and grab some example copy. And to do that, we're going to add a file on the left-hand side. So let's go new file and we'll call this one LinkedIn content example.md. Beautiful. And then we can just start pasting all the stuff in there that we want to. Of course, we could just simply get it to go ahead and describe all the stuff on LinkedIn if we wanted to. Cool. So we've got some example posts on the left-hand side. And what I can do here is say, hey, the LinkedIn posts are here. And actually what we can do is basically do an at sign and you can type in the name of the file, which is LinkedIn content example.md and just say, just follow it and create everything in this tone of voice and style. Awesome. And in terms of the website designs, I want you to leverage best practices for beautiful websites, UI design patterns, all that sort of stuff. Obviously we get way more detailed. I just want to show you the basics of how to actually build something using this stuff. We send that one off like that. And again, now chat GPT can go ahead and do all the thinking for us there. Then in terms of the design for the dashboard, why don't we come over to Dribble and grab a little bit of inspiration? So we could just say something like, I don't know, like a dashboard and let's see what Dribble can grab for us so we can find something good and decent to give it as a reference image. This I think here looks really cool. So why don't we just give this a quick copy? Again, normally we would just mood board this. So we'd get like four or five images and describe the start style and detail, depending on how detailed you wanted to get. So we're going to come back over and let's just paste that into the file. Yeah, let's paste that image.png. And I'll just sort of say, use this as the design reference for the dashboard. Cool. And then just do an at sign and let's go for design at image.png. Beautiful. And let's send that one off. So what's really cool now is actually built out all the information for the data schema, the blueprint. And if we're happy with it, we just say, hey, that sounds good. Let's go ahead and do it. And it's really cool guys with this stuff. Like you do just get free models. So all I could do if I wanted to is click on this plus here, for example, for new terminal, I could just go open code. And then what you've got here, if I just go for forward slash models, I've got these free ones. So I can just say, I've got the big pickle, but we've got the mini max MM2. We've got grot code fast, whatever I want to. I can just ask it to start doing stuff if I want to completely for free, no concern about tokens at all. And obviously you've seen the Ralph Wiggum thing that people are doing and all that sort of stuff. If you did want to do that and that burns a ton of tokens, you could run things like that or just like low level tasks that don't interfere with the main project on these free models if you want to. I do think the bigger benefit though is the fact that you kind of get access to all the models. But again, if you're on the more premium subscription anti-gravity, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that. What's cool here is come back and ask for some different add-ons. So it said, for example, what do you want? So do you want to share copy buttons for each post, export all posts to CSV, Titan generation structure? Let's say that I want to be able to let me export CSV and let me copy the post with a nice copy button and let's do confetti after I copy it. Okay, give it a little challenge, something kind of like add a little bit of edge to it. And while OpenAI is working in the background, I'll also show you how you can get access to Claude and also Gemini within OpenCode. So to do that, we're going to head over to this website. So to do that, you can head over to OpenCode Anti-Gravity Auth. Now, the way that this works is you'll have a Gmail account and what this is doing is using the auth that you use in the browser to access the models. This is something I genuinely think that Gemini is probably going to patch. I mean, it happened to Anthropic actually, and Anthropic, like Claude Code, they shut that down, they changed that term. So this is something I don't think is going to exist for too long in the future, just because if everyone's using their email, basically they're probably not going to be paying for their usage. But it does exist at the moment, and the way that you can get it in anti-gravity if you want, just so you understand what is available, is you can literally copy this. So you essentially come back over and give it a problem like this, which is install the open code anti-gravity auth plugin with the anti-gravity model definitions to my global config using this URL. Give me the Google award later. Hit enter. And after you've done that, what anti-gravity will open the page is you can select the account that you're basically doing it with. So the Google account like so, you click on this one. Then it asks for permissions to connect. And it says, also, you've successfully authenticated anti-gravity. You can now return to open code and then you can close this tab or head back over to anti-gravity itself. And when you come back, you just click on accept all and then everything should be available within open code. And you can validate that by coming down on the top two terminal, click on a new terminal like so. Let me just delete this one down and get out of the way, for example. And if I just type in, uh, let's come here and enter in here, open code, we should get the full browser. And then you should be able to see something from anti-gravity. So if I come down, I do models. As you can see now, I've got Claude Opus 4.5 thinking anti-gravity, Sonnet 4.5, and also all the Gemini models. And that's basically just using your Google signing credentials. Again, I'm not using this. I've got the pro account and I do think they'll patch it, but just so you're aware of what is available and the kind of like options out there to connect certain things to things. But what I want to show you now, which is really interesting, now all this code has been built by basically ChatGPT in any matter we want to. I think the use case that I would probably lean on the most with this stuff is if you're doing an insane amount of code, we can leverage some of the free models and then we can bring in Gemini as kind of like a essentially to kind of make the design unstoppable. Now, personally speaking, I'm always going to be using Gemini and Claude to build everything out. But if there are really specific mundane tasks that don't require a big brain approach to think about it, I will just whip up open code, get it to deploy, get it to work on something really specific without that. But 
if you are someone who's like in a position where you're really trying to stretch and think about your token management, these are really incredible options. So what I can say with this is, hey dude, what I want you to do is go through the design and essentially improve the design and layout of the entire dashboard, make it excellent, make it gorgeous, and do a sense check of all the code to make sure it is in a beautiful position and ready to go. So we can use Gemini now to review everything we want to and do whatever we'd like. One of the, I guess, limitations of OpenCode, I'd say, is that you don't have access to the browser like you do. So when you come and leave the anti-gravity section, you don't get access to the agent manager and you don't get that inbuilt browser thing that you can use within the anti-gravity environment, basically. Beautiful, and now it's done, let's give it an example. So I've got some information here about anti-gravity. Let's come down and click on generate posts and see this turned into a couple of LinkedIn posts for us. Give that a hot second and see what it'll do for us in the background. There we go, imagine XYZ, ready to level up, build faster, some options, scroll down, and I could literally come down here, copy it, and then paste it onto LinkedIn. And obviously we can make that way better by being really specific on the hooks and give it loads of information, but you get the idea of the kind of system you can build now with this, then also coming to the terminal, new terminal, and then leveraging here open code whenever you want to use any of these sort of 150 models that are available within open code. So you can now use this alongside anti-gravity at the exact same time. And so now we've learned exactly how to leverage different models within anti-gravity, some of them completely free to use. The next thing that we need to do is learn how to leverage anti-gravity to build profitable business systems, which you can learn by watching this video right here.